We are ready to learn four additional multi-letter phonograms. The first one is er, the er of her. The second one is or. This is e, a, a. Sh. Go ahead and write these in your teacher's training manual on page 87 as I say them again. Er, or, e, a, a, sh. What is the most common reason for a long vowel sound in English? Are you thinking a silent final E? The reason most people answer that is because it's the only reason most people know for a long vowel in English. However, it is not the most common reason. Let's look at a few words and see if you can figure out the most common reason for a vowel to say its long sound. So we have bag and bagel, bend, b, taught, total, hum, human. What do you notice? You're right, the vowel is saying its long sound at the end of the syllable. And that is summarized by the rule A-E-O-U usually say their names at the end of the syllable. We are now ready for spelling list 3. Spelling list 3 is located on pages 88 and 89 of your teacher's training manual. I would encourage you to practice dictating these words first uh, on your own and then to come back to the video and watch me dictate them. Alright, spelling list three. The first word is frozen. Ice is frozen water. How many syllables in fro-zen? Two. And the first syllable is fro. Er, o. The second syllable is zen. Z. This is the phonogram z. E, n. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. Er, o. Second syllable is zen. Z, e, n. And how will we mark it? We'll put a line over the o to show that it's saying it's long sound. And why did the O say O in frozen? Because it's at the end of the syllable. Let's say the rule together. A, E, O, U usually say their names at the end of the syllable. The second word is paper. Write your name on the paper. How many syllables in pay, per, two? The first syllable is pay, p, a. Second syllable is per, p, er. This is the er of her. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. First syllable is pay, p, a. Second syllable is per, p, er. And how will we mark it? We'll put a line over the a, and we'll underline the er. Why did the a say its name? Because it's at the end of the syllable. What is the rule? A, e, o, u usually say their names at the end of the syllable. Now, we can sound it out together. P, a, p, er, paper. When students become more advanced in their reading fluently, I often skip the step of sounding it out with them. When they are emerging readers, I make sure to reinforce how to read the word. So from here on out in the training video, we will not be sounding out the words, but keep in mind that's a skill that you might want to be practicing with your students depending on their uh, ability level. The third word is pepper. Please pass the pepper. How many syllables in pep, per? That's right, two. The first syllable is? Pep, p, e, p. Second syllable is per, p, er. Go ahead and sound it out and write it. And now help me to write it. P, e, p. Second syllable is per, p, er. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the er. What would it say if we didn't double the p? It would say peeper because the e would be at the end of the syllable. One of the most common reasons for double consonants in English is to close the syllable so that the vowel says its short sound. The fourth word is hero. The fireman who rescued her is a hero. Let's sound it out together. He, ro. The first syllable is he, h, e. Second syllable is ro, er, 
O. Now, I want to be very careful that you are sounding out the word and that it's not the teacher sounding out the word. Even though you hear me, I can reinforce that for you, but it's really your job to break it into its individual sounds. Go ahead and help me to write it. First syllable is he, e, second syllable is ro, r, o. And how will we mark it? We'll put a line over the e and a line over the o. And why did the e and the o say their names? Because they're at the end of the syllable. The next word is bread. We will have bread for lunch. Bread. Let's sound it out together. B, er, e. This is an e, e, a, d. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. B, er, e, d. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the e. Now, what sound of e, e, a is it? It's the second sound, so we're going to put a little two over it to remind us it's saying its second sound, e. Eh. The sixth word is man. The man is working hard. Man. M, a, n. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. M, a, n. The seventh word is human. To air is human. Now, we are going to say to spell human. Now, if you're a native English speaker and you're wondering about this, just follow along. I think you're going to find something kind of open up for you. So let's go ahead. We'll say to spell human. How many uh, syllables? Two. The first syllable is hu, you. The second syllable is man, m, a, n. Go ahead and write it. And as you say it, uh, sound it out. And this, then let's help me to write it. First syllable is hue, you. Second syllable is man, m, a, n. And what did the u say here? It said it's long sound, so we'll put a line over it. And we'll say to spell again, hue, man. But what do we usually say? Human. Now. In English, this is a place where we can begin to use morphology because the accented syllable is hue, and this is actually a schwa sound, which we'll discuss later, but just for uh, your help right now, a schwa is an unaccented vowel sound. So what you'll notice here, though, is that man and human are related in meaning. And we can draw out for the students how are they related in meaning, and that's why the spelling is preserved that way. You might also be interested to know that in a word like humanity, I can write it for you here, that uh, you clearly hear this a sound in humanity. So we can find the derivative humanity and this vowel sound here is clearly articulated as an a. So this is part of the morphophonemic uh, nature of English. Word number eight will be woman. I know that woman from work, woman. We are going to say to spell, yes, you guessed it, woe man. And this one's kind of funny, I think. So let's say to spell, woe man. And two syllables, let's sound it out together. Wo, o, second syllable's man, m, a, n. Go ahead and write it. And then help me to write it. First syllable is wo, wo, o. Second syllable is man, m, a, n. And what did the o say here? It said it's long sound, it's at the end of the syllable. And what do we usually say? We usually say woman. Now, you'll notice woman creates a very strong auditory picture of the word. So most of the time, um, we are going to have to rely on the visual memory in order to know if woman is spelled correctly. But if we say to spell words, we can create an auditory picture of those words as well. We can also go back and draw on the morphology. Man, human, and woman are obviously all related in root and in meaning, and therefore they all have a related spelling as well. The ninth word is forest. They walked through the forest. How many syllables in four est? Two. The first syllable is four, f, or. The second syllable is est, e, s, t. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. Or, second syllable is est. S, 
product. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the or. The tenth word is beak. The bird has a yellow beak. Beak. Let's sound it out. B, E. This is an E at A. K, tall K. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. B, E, K. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the E. Why could we not use a two letter K here? That's right, because it's saying it's a long sound and it's also not a single letter vowel. Two letter K is used only after a single short vowel.